In this lesson, we're going to discuss the residential dual check. This is a, a device, a non-testable device. It's repairable, or at least some of the units are repairable. We'll talk about that in a minute. But these were originally designed to protect against the dangers that you'll find in a house. Um, in the old days, people were developing pictures in the house and use some chemicals with that. And we could possibly get some backflow of those chemicals into the water system. But between herbicides, pesticides, cleaning chemicals and all this, we really need a protection for the residences. So you'll see a lot of water purveyors or water systems that use these right after the water meter or curb stop or whatever they have there. But now a lot of uh, jurisdictions, a lot of states are relaxing the rules that they had for irrigation systems. Uh, for instance, in my state, South, South Carolina, that they only wanted the, um, the double check valve assemblies, but then they reduced the requirement down to this for residential irrigation systems. And so now you'll see these, uh, some, some water systems don't like them, some like them and want you to go to it. So the difference is, is that it's non-testable. So every one year, three years, five years, whatever the interval is there, instead of a test, you're either going to replace the unit or replace the guts inside of it. So there's two different kinds involved here. We have, um, this is here is a, a Zern Wilkins version that you can take apart. And it has the check valves inside of it. And we'll take that apart like fully in just a minute and talk about that. But there's another kind that Watts makes that has the union on it, but this side here, it has the check, the two check valves inside of it, but they're not replaceable. Or at least that, that I can tell, but I, I'm pretty sure that they're not. But the only ones that I can see that uh, that have the modules that you can buy, the check modules, are the, the Zern Wilkins version of it. So, uh, and normally when you mount these, you know, on other types of backflow preventers, you're going to want the serial number and direction of flow possibly to be visible while the handles are visible. On this one, it doesn't matter because if you're going to be taking it apart to change it or replace it, you're going to see the serial numbers uh, no matter what. So in, if, if you're doing the testing, you're going to need the serial numbers for the for the test form. Pretty much every jurisdiction is going to want to know something about the device that's there. But, um, you know, if you're just a, an irrigation technician, there's not going to be a whole lot that you can do with these aside from install them. And that's what we're going to talk about here. But you can also take them apart and flush them out if you have some upstream contamination, like a, a pipe break on the main that gets some dirt and stuff flushed into here. At least we can replace these on the Wilkins version, um, not the Watts, but if you deal with these in your market and you're installing these, always keep a couple of packs of the check valves and the O-rings with you just in case that, that you're getting your irrigation system is clogged up and it's because of this piece here. Now, when you're going to install these, almost always this should be the very first component in the irrigation system. We've already discussed that. So I would suggest, now these have a direction of flow. So the direction of flow on this one, let's say it's going this direction here, right? It's got a union on this side. I would suggest you put either a gate valve or a ball valve right here as an isolation valve for your irrigation system. But I would strongly recommend that on this side here, you use a, a Schedule 80 nipple, a two inch nipple with a union. This is a one inch unit here. They come in half inch, three quarter inch, and one inches for the residential dual check. So I've got a, a one inch by two inch nipple here with a one inch threaded union. And so the reason for this, you want a union on the front and on the back, because if you're replacing this, all we want to do is take apart this side and then take apart this side over here. I'm not sure if I can get this undone, but then, you know, you take both sides of your union apart and then just lift this up and out, replace it or replace the guts pop it back in here and you're back in business without having to cut any pipe. And in fact, I'd recommend this setup on any kind of component like a backflow preventer that you may have to take out to replace for the or put away for the winter or operate on. Put some unions on either side of it and it makes things really easy. Now, I'm the kind of person who says that every glue joint, every thread is a possibility for a leak, but do good work and you can prevent yourself from having to cut this back out and creating a mess later. 
Let's go ahead and take this apart. And there's one O-ring, one check valve, another O-ring, and another check valve. Pay attention to the direction of flow on your checks. If you take them apart, this is a check module. On some of these Model 700s, you'll find a gasket here and another O-ring down inside, but on this one, it doesn't have it. You'll see that in the instructions. They always give you an exploded view of this so you know how to put them back together. But this one has beveled edges down in here and it seals up good. Put that back in with our O-ring. The next check module and an O-ring. And now we're gonna put our, our union back together there.